everyone and welcome to our NASA Farmcraft announcement stream. I am super excited to introduce the guests that we have joining us here today that are a part of our super awesome team that has been putting this work together for this launch. Um, but before I hop into there, if you are watching the stream right now, um, thank you for joining us. If you have other folks that are joining with you, if you can kindly message them and make sure that they are logged into the correct uh, stream, because I know that there are, there's a good amount of people that are in the other stream still. So if you can kindly help us message folks to help get them in the right stream link. Um, but if they refresh the page, they'll see the link in the description as well. So hopefully we can take a couple minutes for folks to be able to help us with that. Um, but I'd like to introduce our fabulous team that's with us here today. So I'm going to start off with our inspirational, um, impactful, motivated, educating educators who are also global Minecraft mentors that are really helping us bring the Minecraft elements to this program. So I'm first going to introduce Kathy, if you can introduce yourself a little bit. Hi everyone, um, I'm Kathy Chow Isaacs. I'm a global Minecraft mentor. Um, I'm also, oh gosh, what do I do? I also spend a lot of time training teachers on how to use Minecraft in the classroom. And my most recent title as of last Friday is um, game design and development teacher at William Anna Middle School and Ridge High School. So if there's any of my students are watching, hello, thank you for watching. And um, we're excited to share this um, new, I guess, what is it? This experience with you all. Thanks, Sam. Great, thank you. And next we'll bring in the Star Wars supernova, <laughs> Eric. Maybe I Professor should have put some Eric. Star Wars stuff behind me over here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, my name is Eric Leitner. Uh, I am also a uh, Minecraft global mentor and uh, I am a STEM and computer science instructional facilitator for the Broward County Public School District, which is the sixth largest school district in the US. Um, I also work directly on the leadership team of Florida Scholastic Esports. So uh, thank you, Sam. And uh, I'm looking forward to this, I'm excited. Every time we launch something new, I'm excited. And you are uh, always a part of, uh, you and Kathy especially, are always a part of some of the most awesome things that we've launched with NASEF. And I'm super excited to introduce Dr. Adam Cornish, who is an agricultural advisor for the U.S. Department of State and brings in the authentic challenges that are kind of happening in our, in our worlds and our environments into this kind of fusion that we've built. Uh, so Adam, thank you. you yeah, sorry, I got a little ahead of myself. Now, my name is Adam, and I work at the U.S. Department of State, which is the Foreign Affairs Agency for the United States. And um, in my role, I'm really trying to think about the international issues that are related to agriculture. And I'm really excited to um, work with all of you, um, especially this great NASEF team, and to really bring people into um, the wild and crazy world of growing crops. So thank you for having me. So before we dive into um, everything that we have planned with Farmcraft for the next couple months, I'd really like us to talk a little bit about what's at stake. So why bring together agriculture, Minecraft, Scholastic Esports, all of these different elements together um, and how, how is this gonna empower students that are out there? And we can start with Dr. Adam. Sorry, muted. It's a consistent problem on my end. So um, that's a great question, Sam, and I appreciate you bringing it up. So um, really at the, the U.S. Department of State, we're really happy to support, be supporting this program. We think there's a lot of uh, value in encouraging greater awareness and understanding of different agricultural challenges and opportunities. And I mean, I really want to bring this home. Um, the global population uh, on our planet is going to be over 9 billion people by 2050. And we really need to make sure that everyone has good and easy access to um, nutritional food. But we're running out of good land to use and the environment is degrading and climate change is rapidly affecting how our farmers are actually able to grow their crops. So 
um, it brings up some really unique challenges, which is how do we make enough food while also protecting the planet and adapting rapidly to changing weather? And so I'll tell you, I don't have uh, all or any of those answers, but there are a lot of really smart people focused on these issues. And it's important to bring even even to bring in even more folks that can help develop new solutions. And so that's where this program FarmCraft comes in. We really want you guys out there to be the folks that are coming up with those solutions. But first, um, we want to help you learn some of the basics. So with you then on board and hopefully becoming our future farmers and researchers and agronomists and traders and all of these very exciting careers, um, together we can solve the agricultural challenges that our planet is facing. So I've taken up enough time. I'll, I'll push it back over to you, Sam. No, I honestly feel free to continue on at any point. Um, but bringing it back to Kathy and Eric, um, especially for students who are in this constant back and forth between distance learning and maybe in-class learning, um, how, can, how, how does bringing in FarmCraft kind of help address the difficulties that they're probably having attending class and feeling motivated. Kathy, would you like to start? I'm well, always I'm waiting. always going to let you go start. first. You like to start. Well, I was going to say I think that um, you know this is a great opportunity for students to get involved um, with many other classrooms around the world and see what they're up to and, and, and share ideas um, using a tool that they love, right? Um, there's no doubt that um, kids of all ages are playing a lot of Minecraft, especially on this remote learning time. I think it's a great opportunity too for teachers to kind of jump in and say, hey, um, let me try this with my kids and uh, see just how much their engagement is going to increase, right? I mean, I have, uh, I've just started a semester and, you know, I mentioned Minecraft and I get all these questions in the chat. When are we playing Minecraft? What accounts do we have? Where is this coming from? And, and I haven't even shared what we're doing with it yet. They're just like, let us in. So, um, you know, it, it's an opportunity to leverage, uh, leverage that. Yeah, and I think Kathy absolutely nails it right there because, um, one of the things we've seen in the past in education is we saw that there were markets and there were people creating uh, web developers and things like that, that that saw the passion that students have for gaming. And to be honest, that everyone has for gaming and said, how do we leverage this to deliver instruction? Uh, and unfortunately, what we got in the past was a whole lot of quote unquote video games that were web-based math games or whatever else that were really math instruction with a thin veneer of gaming laid over them. Uh, and something we've seen over and over again is that the kids always saw right through it. If you told them, hey, you get to go on and play this game, they were like, no, no, I'm doing math. This is, I don't, I don't want to do this, right? It wasn't engaging and powerful in a meaningful way to them because it wasn't something that they embraced. It wasn't a game that they and their friends were talking about, right? Or that would play together. Uh, with Minecraft, it's a platform, right? It's, it's a tool. It's not delivering the instruction itself. It is the tool in which that instruction is uh, being presented or even being, or, or the projects themselves are being created and returned to the educator. Uh, because, and that is a totally different concept. Uh, what we've seen completely happen is that students have an ownership of Minecraft. When teachers bring Minecraft in the classroom, they are never the expert in the room. Ever. Never is that teacher front and center, the expert in the room. And all of a sudden the students are the expert in the room because they know everything there is to know about Minecraft. So they say, when they say, hey, we're going to do this project, but instead of, you know, maybe creating a shoebox diorama or doing a poster board or writing me a paper, you're going to create that experience for me in Minecraft. And even if I gave the students all of those options, I can predict pretty well which one most of them are going to do. Uh, and over and over again, I've seen that it's Minecraft. Um, it's something they're passionate about. So all of a sudden a project that they were, oh, I can't believe I have to do this project. Now they're invested, they want to do it. And I see it happening in the clubs that I'm part of on you know teams that I'm, where we've got STEM clubs at various schools. And I see the conversation happening among students. The students are leading that and they're inviting their classmates to come participate with them in school-based initiatives and school-based projects and in education. 
So, so I'm, I'm truly excited because again, this is two things that I'm passionate about the, the scientific aspects here and the Minecraft of it, and it's colliding. Uh, and I'm excited. I'm truly, truly excited. So before we um, move on to, I think we should actually show the trailer next because nice. I feel like you all kind of got it a little exciting. So I think it makes sense too. But um, if any of you can share, what are some of your own personal motivations with Farmcraft specifically, um, the subject matter and maybe some information or area that you're excited to learn more about during our journey? Or for Adam as well, if on the Minecraft side and the gaming side, what you're excited <laughs> about learning. All right, I can I can I can I start? All right, I just want to say that I am all right, there are a few things that I'm interested in, maybe semi obsessed over right now. So, um, you know, my daughter, uh, our youngest daughter, she's really into kind of sustainability and zero waste. So we've started making changes in our household um, to kind of, you know, lean towards composting. Um, you know, we, we finally, we have an arrow garden and that watching that plant, those plants grow has been fascinating. Um, and then we also, uh, we took a cross, we drove cross country uh, last year and uh, we played a game or I played a game anyway. Uh, I yelled corn every time we drove past the cornfield. Adam is laughing because he's like, oh, you were the favorite in the car. I was. Um, so yeah, uh, Eric's like, yes, you would totally do that. Um, mm -hmm. So yes, I yelled corn across the country. I know now why it's called the corn belt. We drove through it forever and ever. And, um, and I'm just like, wow. So there's corn everywhere. There are signs next to the corn. What do the signs mean? I need to know how they harvest all of this corn. Why do they wait? Like this corn can't all be for people because they wait until it's really dried up and nobody eats it. So those are my interests. Like, um, yes. And I need to uh, get on one of those, one of those vehicles. Yes. Yeah, cool. That that's you know that's it's second to me after getting on the zamboni. I want to get on a zamboni, <laughs> the zamboni and then the I want to get on the zamboni. farm equipment. Uh, but they're very similar. Uh, but just just to kind of piggyback off of that, Kathy, um, you know, two passions that I have when it comes to education to bring into any educational space, regardless of the content, uh, is that of inquiry and that of uh, informational literacy, which is somewhere where I think. I'm not going to say in the classroom, but as a society, we have struggled, uh, you know, with terminologies like, you know, fake news and things like that. And how do we identify good sources of information? How do we research things that we have questions about that Kathy was just saying, you know, what do all these signs mean? How do I research that? That is something uh, that I think that this project amongst, you know, several projects, but I think that this project really is targeting. Uh, and that brings me a lot of excitement, a lot of joy, because those are things that are, that are powerful to me, that are meaningful to me, not just as an educator, but as a citizen. So very excited about that. And uh, just briefly from my perspective, I, where, where I come from is I have a strong desire to learn and um, enhance the ability to sustainably grow um, food for the world. And so um, that's, an, that's a passion that I'm hoping to be able to translate into some of the work that's going on in Farmcraft. But when we're talking about what I want to learn, I know nothing about Minecraft. Honestly, it's been existing in the back of my mind for as long as, as it's been around, because I'm a gamer myself, but I just haven't invested the time. Um, and I've been a little removed from the process as it's been, as Farmcraft has been built, because I don't know if anyone's mentioned at this point, but um, the NASEF programmers have actually gone in and retooled a lot of Minecraft and modded it heavily so that it actually reflects, you know, a lot of the things that happen in the real world and we were trying to approach. And so um, I just hopped into the game earlier today and realized that there's beets. I didn't even know that that was one of the crops that we're going after. And so I'm going to be seeing these challenges as all of uh, you are and, your, and the students. And I'm really excited to see uh, how this translates and also what is getting other people excited um what is you know what are the lessons they're learning and what are they going to be able to bring new to us that we weren't thinking about before and honestly i want to see the kids break the game i want to see them yes. say I've, I've been here five minutes and i already have made 20 tons of carrots <laughs> what are we going to do with 20 tons of carrots we don't know but we've got 20 tons so i'm um i'm excited to see the uh 
the creativity. Yeah, Adam, I think you'd make a phenomenal STEM educator because I think every STEM educator that I know that is passionate about it, uh, and you are a phenomenal STEM educator <laughs> in a different way, I guess, than we are, but um, but uh, we want to see the kids find those, like, you know, uh, the, the, how to break the system, if you will, to think outside. And so it's rewarded behavior, right? If they come up with a strategy that is within the guidelines, within the rules, but they found a better way to do it, uh, more power to them. That means that you are a, a solid critical thinker. So I think that's a great hype up for us to play the official Mesa Farmcraft 60 second trailer uh, that's just premiered live today. So let's play that now. So, right, so I, okay, go ahead, Eric. I was going to say, right, that that's all I'm saying is, you know, Kathy mentioned wanting to ride the vehicles uh, for those who are using Minecraft, especially like, you know, vanilla Minecraft, which is what Minecraft Education Edition is most uh, mostly provides. Uh, vehicles are coming. So I, I, I admit, like, that's the one thing that's very far out of what's usually in the game uh, that I'm excited about. I'm not going to lie. Uh, there's a million other things to be excited about. But I mean, come on, big vehicles. We need to ride the trucks. <laughs> <laughs> and a huge shout out to Brian Dickman from Clever Like, who has been leading this modded world that is going to be coming to life in just a month, essentially. So um I know that us in here couldn't hear the audio and watch the video as it was playing for everyone in the stream, but I did watch it before we went on um, stream. And I'm super excited to just see how all the students react to the different elements. Um, you know, there's some decisions that we've made that we're like, is this too specific? Or, you know, is this, <laughs> like, is anyone even gonna notice uh, how accurate some things are or maybe how not accurate some things may be? Um, so I'm super excited for that to be launching. And that kind of takes us into our um, program phases. Um, so I will be going through them, um, but I welcome everyone that here that's joining with me to feel free to speak up to um, any of the pieces that resonate with you. Um, because I think we have a lot planned and I think folks are excited to see what they want to be participating in and when to expect um, things to start up. So if we could share my screen, oh, actually I should share my own screen. I love that logo. I had a little animation that's not showing, but um, so Farmcraft has a lot of different elements to it, but ultimately we have a lot of different opportunities for different types of learners out there. Um, a key thing to note is that any student ages or any person ages eight and up is able to participate in some form of any of these um, challenges. So I greatly encourage everyone to think about what their desired team may be. Is it your high school friends? Is it your family members and your cousins? Um, really think about who you would like to create a farm craft world with and compete in the different challenges. Um, but our preseason will launch in two weeks. So we will be returning to this YouTube channel to officially announce in our bi-weekly stream um, what those preseason challenges will be. But these are um, challenges that are designed just to get students practicing on their basic farm craft farming skills. Um, so 
um, understanding the basics of soil, water, something that we're actually going to show a little bit of a little bit later in the stream. Um, but really just trying to level the playing field out there so that most students are able to have a basic understanding of farming when they're getting up and running. Um, and then also to encourage collaboration between teams. You know, you may have students that are super veterans of my, Minecraft and have built everything you may imagine. But then you may have some students that are interested in participating that are brand new um, and are just getting started. And a key thing to know about both preseason and regular season is that we are offering free Minecraft education licenses with team registration. So as an adult sponsor, once you complete the team registration, if your students or if your team needs Minecraft licenses in order to participate and hop on the same world together, then you are able to easily request that through the event registration. And automatically we are able to get you up and running as students complete their packets. So lots of variety with the preseason to think about how students can work together in practicing different farming skills with Minecraft. Any excitement with preseason? I'm always excited with the preseason because it's the preseason that really lets us actually see what the students are capable of. And it's always where we are uh, the most surprised, right? So if we look at some of our other challenges that we've done in the past, it's that preseason where students are creatively building and submitting what they think is the best possible option for something. And not necessarily within a very strict set of rules, but a kind of open-ended challenge. Uh, and we are always endlessly wowed by those, right? So it gets us really hyped, really excited because we're like, oh, if they're doing this in the preseason, uh, we, we have no idea what to expect when the regular season comes around because they've already blown us out of the water. And so we have about six weeks of preseason to practice the different skills. And then when we head into regular season, um, so we actually will be launching the world file. And so once you're comfortable in your Minecraft education um, world and practicing those skills, for regular season, you will need to download the world file so that you are able to create a world based on that for your team to join with. Um, so that is the key difference between preseason and regular season, where you will have to have that added step of downloading um, <laughs> uh, downloading the Minecraft world file for um, for participation. Uh, I did realize that I had slides to help explain what I'm saying out loud, but um, for both preseason and regular season, the challenges are deployed through Flipgrid. And so the way that you submit your um, completed designs or farms, I should say, um, is by submitting a video through Flipgrid. And so we will have a preseason partic participation guide and a regular part season participation guide that will give you the exact submission details so that when one of your team representatives logs onto Flipgrid to place your submission, you know exactly what information to include um, both on the video and in the text submissions as well. One thing I'd like to say very quickly is I've seen the world that's been developed for this by Clever Like and Brian, and it's super cool. There's at least five, maybe six different biomes. And so the students will be exploring all different kinds of environments and having to respond to just the fact that they're in different areas and how do you grow um, crops in, you know, very dry conditions, very wet conditions, cold. Um, and also there'll be different kinds of crops, you're not going to be growing corn on the Arctic tundra. So I'm, I'm really excited by that piece. Yeah, I, I've got to agree. And, you know, I, I have to admit that internally. So, you know, if you, you know, looking behind the scenes just a little bit, when we would have our first meetings and uh, Brian uh, would bring to us what Clever Like was doing, uh, and those were always the most fun moments of planning all of this was getting to see the world grow before our eyes. So uh, another huge shout out to Brian and the team from Clever Like. Uh, unbelievably impressive stuff. And uh, I know you're, you just saw the, the trailer, so uh, you got a taste of it a little bit. And uh, we, we got to see a little bit more than that, but it's, it's as exciting as it looks. And lastly, we also have our Beyond the Game challenges. So these are, these are different activities that we have put together that don't lean heavily on having to play a video game in order to create something that thinks about 
how we can connect different roles in the esports ecosystem. So um, organizers, marketers, uh, graphic designers, uh, general managers, the different uh, people that come to play, those roles exist in pretty much any ecosystem that you can think of. And I'm sure if we dug deep into animals, we could probably find the animal equivalents of what personalities serve what role within the ecosystem. So um, we will be officially launching these on February 17. And so we will have a we will have to have another stream dedicated to just diving in deep with all of the Beyond the Game challenges. Um, but yeah, these these are ways that different types of students may participate and they also are both individual and team-based. So if there are students that wanna to work together on a project, we are able to give them recognition if they are selected as one of the winners. And if they wanna work alone or if they wanna work on multiple and kind of do a combination, they are able to do that. So more information will come on that on February 17. And lastly, I'm going to take us to our web page um, just to show everyone where they can find more information and where we constantly update information as it becomes available. So um, before I do that, if, Damien, if we can take it to the to all of us speaking together. Um, but I, I would like to we talked a little bit about Brian. Um, oh, that's right. Um, there we go. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about the team that's brought all of us or how, all the different people that make our team. Um, so in talking about the Beyond the Game challenges, you know, there are so many different folks that serve different roles. So within us, we have mentioned Brian from the Clever Like team, and uh, he's the leader of I guess he would be the founder or not the, like the mayor. Is he the mayor of Farmcraft in a way? He could be. Oh, I, I was know. talking and I realized I was muted. So I'm just as guilty as everyone in the 2020, 21, 21 school year. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think that's pretty good. I mean, he definitely founded the town, right? So if we were going to put a plaque up and Brian, I know, is watching and listening right now. So, Brian, if you want to put a, a, a plaque up in the world that says founded by, you know, with your information, uh, I see no issue there because <laughs> I think that's exactly what he is. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, on, and I'll speak for the NACEF side. Um, so between um, myself, uh, which I mean, I've never introduced myself this entire oh, stream, yeah. but... Um, I'm Samantha Anton and I'm Chief Operating Officer for NACEF and have been working with this group since we've started. Um, so I've transitioned from being a tournament organizer to helping organize events and build relationships with our general managers and support their communities. Um, and now I'm focusing mostly on Minecraft. So with myself, our Director of Strategic Partnerships, Lila Bullman, um, and many of our other NACEF team members that wear many hats across different places. Um, we are super excited to just bring the different elements together. I think oftentimes people don't think that Minecraft and esports make sense together directly, um, but truly this is about how we instill healthy competition amongst teams on a global arena. And I'm really excited to see NACEF pursue more Minecraft opportunities in the future, um, like Farmcraft. So um, yeah, and then uh, Eric and Kathy, uh, kind of um, what would you say your role is mostly on the team and, and how do you help create Farmcraft together? So a lot of our approach is coming at this from the role of educator and considering uh, what those educational needs are, but also making sure that that balance exists between our, yeah, we, we wanna do this great, fantastic educational project, but it's still supposed to be fun. It's still Minecraft. We still gotta make it fun. So a lot of it is is that balancing act, right? Of how, how do we make sure that learning and engagement is happening, but that we're also having a blast while we're doing it uh, in a way that maybe it's never been done before. Uh, and that's exactly what we see here. So, you know, I definitely like, like to keep that educator lens on these projects as we work through them. Uh, 
but that comes in two ways or even multiples of ways, right? Because it's, are we addressing certain educational standards? And, you know, we want to make sure of those things, but also are, are we meeting the needs of engagement for those students? Are they going to be engaged and excited about this project when they otherwise may not have been about this content? Um, what about social emotional needs? Are they going to get to collaborate? Are they going to feel like they are part of something greater than themselves? Uh, which is a huge need when it comes to social emotional learning. And we, we address all of those things along the way. And we, we uh, NACEF has always done a great job of addressing um, those kind of positive relationships that esports can foster. Uh, and we want to make sure that that is something that continues. Uh, so we always want to make sure that that is a part of those projects. Uh, that we are lifting, if uh, before anyone, we are lifting the students who are participating up in this project. Mm -hmm. And Eric, I, I, Eric just said it beautifully and perfectly. So I'm just going to say that I'm going to stop <laughs> myself. I have my moments. You do. That was brilliant. Just a few. <laughs> and then Adam, not for you to have to speak for everyone on that is on the U.S. Department of State side. Um, but in addition to contact experts, um, I guess, who are some of the, the, your peers that have joined us on the team that um, folks in the chat may kind of understand like, oh, that, that's a role that I may not have expected would be involved in this at the Department of State level? Yeah, so um, what at the top of the list is Kate Furby and she's an educational and cultural affairs uh, officer and she's kind of the one that actually um, brought this idea to my attention originally. And so what she's been, um, she's been the facilitator. She's the one who makes sure that um, there's good communication going on between my team and everyone over at NACEF and um, uh, hitting all those priority points. And one thing that we haven't mentioned that this is an act, this is actually an international program. So although many of the educators on the uh, watching us today might be in the U.S. Um, we are hoping that this will be uh, global. We and a lot of this is through participation at a variety of the our U.S. diplomatic posts. And so Kate has been acting as um, that communication landline, where she's sending out streamers of information to all of our various posts to make sure that they are up on the latest information, and so that they'll be able to. Um, effectively implement the program within their uh, host countries. Um, the other member that uh, I definitely want to give a shout out to is Nina Murray, who is on my team in the Office of Agricultural Policy. And um, she's bringing in a very uh, important public diplomacy lens where we have to be considering um, how this uh, really can interface with different programs, um, both at the domestic level and international level and how we can promote this from the uh, US government side. And so um, I, those are the um, two members of my team that I, I wanna highlight the, the most. So thank you for that, Sam. Yeah, of course. Thank you all for being a part of this awesome team. Um, and so we have our awesome team. This is how you can create your awesome team on the NASEF website. Um, so I'm that was a phenomenal this. segue. Mm -hmm. That was just Thank you. Thank you. perfect, wow. perfect was, segue. <laughs> I really thought of it right before I said it. So I'm glad that it landed. Um, I hope that everyone can see my NASA Farmcraft stream on the website. Perfect. Uh, so this is going to be your one-stop shop for any updates or information related to Farmcraft. So you can actually save the, the URL nasef.org slash farmcraft. Um, and it'll take you to this page right here. So first we start off with a lot of what we've already gone through, which is what is Farmcraft and what are the key phases of our program? And so when you hop down here, we do have two blue buttons. The first is register your team, which will take you to the registration page. Before you hop in there, we do encourage you to review the registration team guide, which includes the exact questions that you'll see when you are completing the registration form. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So this is the Farmcraft team guide. If you participated in a Rube Goldberg, uh, our Rube Goldberg machine contest, then this is pretty similar. Um, but in many competitions that you'll participate in across different organizations, 
um, usually there is a handy guide that really lays down what's the eligibility for the student. So as an adult sponsor, we do encourage you to go through this with a little bit of a fine tooth comb. We cover code of conduct, which is super important. So as students participate together in online spaces, are they treating each other with empathy, respect, kindness, and empowerment, um, and how we can maintain that. If misconduct ever happens in the community, um, this can be in Discord, in our YouTube streams, um, you are able to report it to us to bring it to NASEF's attention. And that link is available in the participation guide as well. So for eligibility, um, we do have some age requirements for the junior and senior divisions, but for the all ages division, any participant with the, with the age of eight years or up <laughs> uh, is eligible to participate. Um, as mentioned, we are having this international competition. So the only requirement is that all participants are within participating from the same country. Um, so there can't be a mixing of half students from United States, half students from Mexico, but you can register a team of, fully, of students fully from Mexico or from another country. So please visit our website for those exact registration questions, which you can see on the screen, but they may be a little small. Um, Adult sponsors are, are the primary contact for NACEF. So any updates that we send, we send directly to adult sponsors. The adult sponsors also are able to request the Minecraft education licenses for all of their students and for themselves. So if you're an adult sponsor who would, um, is looking to also supervise your students, you will need a copy for yourself. And with the way the Minecraft education world works, all of your Minecraft education licenses do need to be on the same um, license server, same host server? On the same tenant. Yeah, tenant okay. or domain, I guess, would be the terms domain. you'd use, so. Yep. Domain, yes, thank you. Um, so and it, when you request for your students, please be sure to request for yourselves as well so that you're also able to join in on the world. Um, and we also provide access for Flipgrid through the same login. And so Flipgrid, um, I guess, uh, Kathy and Eric, how for folks just, if this is their first Minecraft online competition and they've never heard of a program like Flipgrid before, how would you set that so, down? Yeah, no, Flipgrid is, uh, first of all, it is a completely free educational tool that is free to teachers, students, so on. Um, and what it does is it allows educators or educational organizations um, to create a portal that allows students to upload a video to that portal. So it's a really phenomenal tool for elevating student voice. Uh, it's a phenomenal tool for uh, screen capturing because the tools to screen capture are directly in there. So if students wanted to record what they were doing in, in Minecraft, while giving a voiceover tour explaining their build and why they did it and then submit that, uh, they can do that. So if you're an educator that's watching this and maybe you've never heard of Flipgrid, I, I would head over to flipgrid.com uh, and check it out because it's a phenomenal tool. Um, it's a tool from Microsoft and uh, it's free for educators. Uh, and it's just a phenomenal way if you're looking to get students to submit something other than kind of the typical assignment, but actually have them speak uh, to you, to their classmates, to others, to other participants. Uh, and you, of course, have uh, full control over those settings and privacy settings to determine uh, what gets seen and what doesn't, what gets approved and what doesn't, what is allowed and what isn't, and who can participate and who cannot. So it's a really phenomenal tool for that. And it does make uh, submissions like these uh, a lot simpler, especially if you don't have high-end video editing software already on your computer, because there are some tools right on Flipgrid that you can use to do that video editing uh, if you need to when submitting your, uh, your or creating your video for submission. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of do it all in one place. It's a one-stop shop. Kathy, I know you've got more than me. Well, no, I don't. I just wanted to <laughs> add that I think that it's a great tool for students because it's super intuitive. Um, you don't, you know, like the learning curve is is pretty much flat. Uh, the kids can figure out pretty quickly how to record and um, and submit. Yeah, really easily. So, you know, if you have not heard of it, uh, this is a great um, great tool for that. 
So I greatly encourage everyone to uh, visit nasef.org slash farmcraft and get their registration started because I think the big thing with preseason is getting everyone uh, signed on and down, downloaded and installed and signed on to Minecraft. And sometimes it can be super easy, but there are some situations where there is a little bit of support that you may need. So we just wanna greatly encourage everyone to register as soon as possible. So that way, if there are any technical errors that you need support with, um, there's as much time as possible without fear. So am I missing any common FAQs for registration? Um, and so teams in any country may register uh, as long as they are from this, they are participating from and registering from the same country. Um, we oh. do have, oh yeah, go ahead. How about uh, team size? Yes, so teams are recommended to minimum of one, maximum of four participants. So recommended to, but truly one to four students or for participation. Um, Preseason is not required for regular season. Preseason really is our opportunity to get everyone on the same page, learn some common skills, um, and really just have some fun before we get into a little bit more of a competitive environment with how the biomes and the scores work out with FarmCraft, the official FarmCraft world. Um, so preseason's not, the, submitting the challenges is not required, but I definitely recommend at least at a minimum taking a look at the challenges and using them as just play times or session times with students on things that they can use. Um, and for the different divisions, uh, so we have the junior, which is middle school age students, senior, which is high school age students, and all ages, which is ages eight years of age and up. So ages eight to 13 for junior, senior, 13, 14 to 18, and then ages eight and up for the all ages division. Mm -hmm. So quick question, Sam, just to clarify. Yeah, go ahead. And I mean, I know the answer, but you know, you want to treat these things like a fun conversation. Um, if a team has, or let's say we have a household that wants to participate and they've got uh, children who range in anywhere from eight to 18, if they join in all ages, can that whole household act as one team? Yes, they can. And we are asking that students are only registering for one, one team, one division. So let's say in that family, for example, there's a student that their school's also participating. Um, they, they shouldn't be participating in the same division. And so, yeah, um, hopefully you choose a division, <laughs> but there are ways that you could hypothetically get around it um, with, you know, people have multiple emails. And so please use only one registration per, per student per packet, but yeah, that's a great question, Eric. Sure. Do we want to hop into Minecraft? I mean, I don't know what kind of Minecraft kickoff stream it would be if we don't go into Minecraft. We were trying How, to get in so much sooner. I was going to say, I will preface this, of course, by saying uh, we're not about to go into the clever, like, phenomenal world that we've been talking to. We're going to go into my bare bones farm world <laughs> uh, that we're going to demo because uh, one of the things I wanted to make sure we saw and we covered, and I'll go ahead and share my screen as we go because Kathy and Adam uh, are already in the world with me. So I'm going to go ahead and do my uh, screen we're share. We're chomping here. at the bit. We're chomping. All right. We're so so this play. is where um, all um, the um, horse um. people in my family <laughs> will tell you that the term is champing at the bit. Champing. Uh, yes, oh, that horses goodness. champ. They don't chomp. And uh, don't, don't get me wrong. I only know that because I was corrected a few times. So right. it's okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> So I've got them in the world. And one of the reasons we wanted to come into the world real quick was not to show you the amazing thing that will be Farmcraft, but so that especially the educators who maybe aren't too familiar with Minecraft realize that farming has always been a core mechanic um, or has for a long time been a core mechanic of the Minecraft game as it already exists. And the students know this. So many of the students who are playing already know it. Um, so what we're going to do real quick is demonstrate that, right? We may as well, we got three of us here and we've got a team. We've got our team, uh, Sam, you know, you're welcome to hop in if you want to as well, but, uh, we're going to build a farm. So Kathy is here with me. Kathy, you got tools. You're good to go. I have a tool. Yep. You have a tool. I have a um, tool. 
So Adam is relatively new to Minecraft, as, as he mentioned, but we did jump in for just a tiny bit so he could get started prior to this call. And sure enough, he's phenomenal at making melon and pumpkin patches. So I'm pretty sure that's the role he's taking already. Oh, you know, it's the only thing funny. I know. That's I want, right. You know, it's funny. I'm standing here and I'm like, oh, I want to do it my way. but I'll So do it your way. Who's I know, but you? I have to think about it. I think Make what you want. You I'm do what you want. If I've been doing it one That's way and you're like, no, 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 I'm going to do it a different oh, way. Oh my goodness. We've got I a water too mess. much water. Eric, I mean. All right, uh, I'm, I'm on Eric, it. I'm on Adam. it. I'm coming to help. I'm coming to help. Yeah. This, is, this is a typical Minecraft problem and we're oh, going to resolve it right can now. Can I just share? There we go. Adam, there we are. It's okay that you did that. It's 100% fine. And one of um, one of my first grade or a few of my first grade friends, they said, um, oh, Mrs. Chow Isaacs, you just fixed that by covering the water. And I'm sure a lot of kids that are watching the stream are aware of that. But I was not aware of that. So it was a great opportunity for me to learn from my students um, mm. and, and for me to be the learner. Oh, I've, I've gotten into your pumpkin patch a little bit there. Sorry about that. And oh, I'm wait, messing up my whole farm. Get, here. get right in. Jump All right, on I'll, in. I'll, I'll just appreciate it. We're just going to appreciate the mess. Professor Eric, may, yeah, may, so can may, for may you send the secret code? The secret code, you say? It should still be in our chat if you can scroll up in the uh, in our chat. Wait a minute. Uh, oh, wait. Did that that land? No, that that that, that Oh, that, it yeah, did. Well, the, here, here's the horrible secret is if I if I pull it up now to look at it, oh, wait, everyone knows. Everyone will see it. Oh, I think it was. Oh, I have no idea what it was. And you know what my memory was from before. <laughs> It's okay. Wait a minute. I don't want to exclude you though. Do you want me to like just hide it and then pull it up and then jump back in? I don't want to exclude anybody. That is a core feature of what but we you, do here. You know, well, here's the thing too. Um, I'm just a little upset you don't remember it. No, it changed. I, I, it did change. It did change. No, no, I'm, I'm upset at Eric. He should have memorized that. I stuff. should have memorized it. You're right. I've already failed the first quiz. I don't know if they knew there were going to be quizzes, but I've already failed the first one. But you know what? You have to be in the same domain anyway. That's true. So I think it's okay if you. See all right, you all right. Out. You've, you've. Let's I mean, go. It is share. rail share sign sign panda, and if I find people jumping in that shouldn't be, we'll just address that because we well, know how to do that. Right. We'll, we'll rail sign sign you. panda, and for the record, that is rail, not ladder, because every teacher I. I you know, we, we go over how to use Minecraft. They're like, that's a ladder. And I'm like, no. And then also the map, everyone's like, that's a saltine. I'm like, there's no saltines a in saltine? Minecraft. <laughs> I've never heard it called a saltine. It looks well, a little bit like be. a saltine. So, Maybe you know. people are hungry. Oh, I think they're hungry. hungry. I think it's, we're, we're getting them right around snack time. Uh, right. But what we're doing I mean, here, as you'll notice, is there are some real world farming elements mm -hmm. that are going on. Um, you'll see Kathy has been tilling and planting seeds, which are now sprouting uh, where she has tilled the soil. Uh, we've irrigated the land because water is required and you can see where water is starting to soak in in the dark spots over here and it will spread you can see it popping up and popping up there's you know our water is seeping into the soil uh you can see adam over here has already learning mad skills because adam has got bone meal which he is util uh, using to fertilize his plants to make them grow faster and they look sparkly and wonderful um and of course light Light is something that our plants need. Um, and many of our students have become very proficient at doing indoor farms and things like that, or even automated farms using things like redstone in game. Uh, because, and I'm gonna pull out for an overview here, uh, because all of those are skills. So they know that when they build an indoor farm, they need to account for all of those things. They not need to bring indoors uh, the soil that is required. They need to have a way to water those crops. They need to bring lighting into that area. Uh, if they can get the fertilizer, they need to fertilize that, those crops to, to you know, maximize their yield, their output of their, their farm uh, and get food fast. So uh, that, that's literally what's going on here. So those core mechanics that are in the game already, uh, already to an extent apply to real world stuff. Now I'm looking at Kathy over there and she's the one dressed in black on the right side of the screen. Uh, and she has a little friend with her, which is the agent. Kathy, were you attempting to code some farming? I am attempting to code some farming. So I, um, I'm not very good at walking and placing at the same time. And sometimes I feel like, um, what I just am falling behind. So, but I do like to code things. So I'm trying to, um, code my agent to for now i'm going to have it turn around 
So I'm telling it to turn left two times and then I need it to move forward. So I'm just using Code Builder to make some chat commands of my own uh, to have the agent do some work for me. So sometimes it seems like uh, it's a little bit longer, like I must be standing there in the screen, like I'm not doing anything, but I'm thinking really hard about how to be really efficient with my, um, my playtime because uh, I cannot build or place as fast as some people. That so. is fair. And you know, they can't see your code builder. So I popped up the code builder on my screen. Oh, okay. um, and for those who are curious, again, for the educators, and some of you I know are do participate in things like Hour of Code, Minecraft Education Edition has uh, coding built right into the platform. So you can see that there's block based coding. Uh, and of course, as our students get better at coding and more proficient, they can switch over to JavaScript, uh, or even Python, uh, and code the things that are happening in the world. So now they're not just uh, playing in their world, but they're they're creating not only the stuff in the world through build, you know, building with blocks, uh, but they're creating the underlying code of the game as well to modify their worlds, uh, which is a phenomenal thing to see. And this is something that in our preseason uh, we definitely allow. Why wouldn't we? If you uh, if you're a coder, then 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 show us what you got. We love to see the coding in action. All right, I think I'm about to get it. Let's see, active one, repeat, num, and move forward by one. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, you're gonna run your code. Cross so we're gonna keep fingers. an eye okay. on this so little robot guy, the agent I'm right here. I'm hoping will happen is what I'm, I hope that the agent is gonna move forward and plant, oh, I have to till up there. Oh, wait. Um, so maybe he needs it needs to till as well. Maybe or maybe Adam can help you out until ahead of time okay. and run ahead of your agent. See if he's fast enough. OK, so <laughs> I just have a few spots. So what I'm hoping is that my agent will um, plant seeds for 10 blocks forward. OK, OK, so I'm going to say plant 10 and I'm going to cross my fingers. And yes. yeah, yeah, you have automated our farm. Okay, Look so that was ten. Him. Not that I didn't count because that's the other thing I have a hard time doing is counting how many <laughs> blocks there are. So, I think you did um, nine. That was not. Oh, because it went one behind. He's standing on right. He's standing on the tenth block. Okay, right. so now yeah. I have to do it again. So plant. I'll plant ten again. I feel like something weird is going to happen. When I you know. Do well, that. I'm going to plant ten. It's going to go too far because I, I can only count up to like two in Minecraft. Okay. Oh, that was cool. So I, I still don't know. I should have. You spilled over into the melon patch. I know I did. I got to go clean that up. <laughs> You're ruining right. my melon. Sorry. Sorry. OK. Although look at this glorious melon you've got here. It's nice and round. That's totally how melons look. Yeah, yeah. They're, <laughs> that's totally a thing, right? Square melons. And actually, I think it is. I think there are some some like uh, interesting that's... things you can do where you grow them in a container and, and get a square yes. melon, right? <laughs> they, they very much act like. Uh, uh, a liquid they grow to encompass the space they're in okay so now there you go there's your science lesson specifically for this session right here <laughs> things you didn't know about melons uh, <laughs> and honestly i didn't know that's how that worked exactly but now i know <laughs> well i'll be honest i'm not a melon expert so i could be wrong this is something that i need to uh get on the youtube and learn about later is there a name for that is there like a melanologist or <laughs> I mean, we can certainly uh, explore that. I mean, if you'd like to be the world's first melanologist, I support you. Getting right on it. I'm going to get right on it. So tell, tell me a little bit more about this fertilizer, because sometimes it hits and sometimes it doesn't. I'm using bone meal as fertilizer. You are using bone meal. Uh, it only faster. works. Right. So it only works on some crops and some crops it needs more than others. Mm. And of course, with certain so crops to... like your pumpkins here and your melons, they need a certain amount of space as well. As you can tell, they don't just grow straight up, right? They grow over. Yep. Uh, so if there's not a way for that particular plant to grow or it can't because of its surroundings, it doesn't matter how much fertilizer we dump on it. It is limited by its environment. Yeah, which is why I spaced all of these out in different configurations so that they could uh, theoretically be able to grow into the spaces around them. Although my, my watermelons seem to be going kind of slow. I'm not quite, sh quite sure what's going on with all that. 
Yeah, maybe, uh, you know, it's a fun thing to experiment with, especially with the crops in here is, is figuring out what's the best arrangement to get, you know, a good output. All right, I think I'm going to automate some fertilizing. Um, Ooh. This time will be seven. I'm going to try 17. Okay. He's going to do some some bone meal distribution for us. Guesstimating. And okay. hopefully it works because I'm placing down. So I want to fertilize, fertilize, fertilize. 17. Whoop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Now, Kathy, I don't know if you saw what the... happened. It's totally working, but. I know, it fertilized dropped... me. Right, he dropped fertilizer in the grass before he started going to the crops. And sure enough, mm. look what happened to our grass, right? Yeah. When you oh, fertilize the grass, yeah, all of a sudden we, you get all this like weed over. We need over some growth. sheep. Oh. Now, Adam, I got to ask you as the scientist, is that something that we see happen in the real world as well? If fertilizer is spilling over into places it shouldn't be, do we get consequences or yield that we shouldn't have, like like weeds and grass overgrowing? Well, I can't, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I can't speak necessarily to if... Um, the um, grass, the grasses themselves would overgrow. The biggest issue is actually when fertilizer enters the water table um, because it's, it, it's prominently uh, water soluble. That's uh, you know, how it actually can be spread through our fields. But when it goes into the um, water table, that means it then goes eventually into tributaries and streams. And um, fertilizer itself is a um, nitrogen rich comp set of compounds essentially. And, um, a lot of, a lot of things actually need nitrogen to grow properly, um, including algae and other kinds of microorganisms or microbes that are in the water. And when you suddenly give them this huge influx of nitrogen, which is normally something they don't have access to, they, those populations explode. Um, and so, um, that's really cool for them. They're really excited to uh, become big and strong and happy, but that has detrimental effects on organisms in the, um, in the waterways, um, especially um, there. The Mississippi is this fantastic water, water system that, feed, that, that, that helps irrigate land all the way from Lake Michigan down to um, the Atlantic Ocean and the, the, the Gulf, uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Well, um, every year, um, because of all the fertilizer that's used, we actually see um, these huge algal blooms happen in the Gulf of Mexico as all of this fertilizer runs down into it from the uh, Mississippi River. And that's a problem, actually, because as the, this, these algae uh, reproduce and get bigger and bigger um, and uh, denser in the, um, in the Gulf, uh, in the Gulf, they actually start respiring that, you know, you and I breathe oxygen, they can pull oxygen out of the water and use that to continue to grow. And as they do that, that means all the oxygen gets actually depleted in the, um, water very quickly. Wh who else needs that water? Well, fish. And so what we actually uh, see every, um, every summer is um, a big dead zone that appears actually in the, the Gulf because all of these algal blooms have appeared because of fertilizer uh, use. And um, now the oxygen is gone. And now all of these fish have either fled the region or have died because they don't have access. So, I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a, of a sad story. So that's actually a problem that um, many people have been trying to address for a long while is how do we... Um, uh, fertilize in a smart way so that we're only using the exact amount that is needed for a field. And so that you're not going to have, um, have these algal blooms happening in these death zones. So um, a little bit of a long-winded answer, um, Eric, but the, the problem isn't necessarily the growth of other plants. It's the, um, it's the growth of algae in the water. That's a, that's a, that can be a concern. If anyone was wondering why we're excited to have Adam involved in this project, I, I think that, that has why. been put to rest. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, 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 that was a phenomenal mini question. lesson. And I, I'm so happy it was a part of this dream, right? You know, so much of this was about what the project was going to be, uh, about how to get registered. And, and all of that is an important part of all of this. But that that answer that you just gave is exactly what this is about. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm I'm genuinely thrilled that 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 just happened. 
Kathy, hold still. You're getting put in weed jail. You've been creating too many weeds. I know. I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I, I can't count. I don't know how far. I'm just guessing. Kathy's just going to fertilize the world. She's, she's ready. Fertilize. Well, at least I'm using bone meal and not another fertilizer product. <laughs> And, and which, Adam gave that, I, I just want to say, Adam, you gave that entire lesson while walking around in Minecraft. I was watching you like, I was gonna oh, say, we're really getting taught while he's just taking a stroll in the backyard. Yeah, instant well, if, pro, if, instant pro. If I, if I can, uh, I, I have to give props to my um, Scottish friend, Donnie. He and I play video games every Sunday and we spent the entire time just talking to each other. So um, including a full two year run through of uh, Stardew Valley. So I, I, he's given me the practice. Perfect. Well, I think we are at the end of our stream. We're actually a couple minutes over. So do we want to share any, go around and share any final thoughts before we wrap our first bi-weekly stream of the season? I think I just shared mine because I feel like that, yeah. that, that little mini lesson was, that was it. That's, that's what we're going for. Uh, and that's the kind of uh, connections we want to make between literally just an observation in Minecraft um, and the real world science that's taking place. Uh, I could do this all day, but unfortunately I think uh, the stream time has Come to uh, come to an end, or unless Sam is going to give us another hour to play. No, no, no. I I think um, I'm super excited and super looking forward to what we have to come in the next few weeks. And so we will be back on stream. Um, at least Kathy, Eric, and myself will. Although there's always an open invite for you, Adam. Um, but we will be back on Wednesday, February 17th at 1 p.m. Pacific time and 4 p.m. Eastern time. So. We can leave this on a little bit of a, you know, you'll, you'll have to return for more fun. And I hope that we have more mini lessons. Um, we'll have to turn them into sound bites and play them throughout streams. Mm -hmm. So thank you everyone who joined me both in, in our call and in the chat. I'm really looking forward to the launch of this season and we will see you in a few weeks, two weeks. Thanks everyone. Thanks so much, Sam. Thanks everyone, bye. Bye.